your TV library. To continue our investigation into the study of nutrition today, we will be talking about the discoveries of Justice von Liebig, known as the father of fertilizers. In the 19th century, the science world was occupied with the notion of sustaining the workforce that fueled its industries. One of the ideas that arose from the time period was the perception of the human body as the vital source of energy for industry. So particular attention was paid to the cost of food and nutrition to improve how workers could perform. For example, a scientist, Rubner, who worked in thermodynamics, discovered that energy from food was eventually converted into heat and aimed to identify foods which converted the least into heat so that the rest of the energy could be converted into mechanical labour. He identified proteins as the substance where the heat to energy ratio was least favourable in terms of producing workload from food. The major source for proteins was meat, which of course was expensive compared to crop or potatoes, which are major sources for carbohydrates. And since workers need to convert their food into work, it seemed obvious that expensive meat was not necessary, but that brain food, meats and other foods containing protein, should be given to persons who did an intellectual work, but not for those doing manual labour. This is when the works of Justice von Liebig, who was born in 1803 and died in 1873, became well known within the community of chemists. Liebig was a German chemist who taught chemistry at the University of Gießen, as well as the University of Munich. The reason why Liebig was called the father of fertilizers was because he created a hypothesis about the mineral nutrition of plants, thus creating the basis of the development of modern agricultural chemistry. His research is also considered to be the precursor to the study of the impact of environmental factors on organisms. Interestingly, he formulated the law of the minimum, which states the scarcest resource is what limits a given organism. Another invention which he created was an apparatus that could determine the amount of carbon in any organic substance. That was called the five bulb device. It was indeed I who organized the chemical laboratory as we know it today. Oh dear student, not that way, turn them around. I have to watch my students. Uh, they do not always follow the correct order. Analyze the organic matter first. <sighs> this is not all we are doing here. I believe we can change the political system here in Germany by promoting our discoveries in agriculture. Yes, science can change our political system. That's why I like John Stewart's Mills book entitled a logic, because it promotes science as a means to social progress and political development. And also because Mill describes several examples of my research. This, of course, is ideal for scientific methodology. But he was best known for his work on the physiology of animals and also on agricultural chemistry. Liebig's key assumption was in principle that the process of fat generation during digestion could entirely be displayed by means of laboratory chemistry. Although heavily discussed during his lifetime, the assumption turned out to be correct and hence Liebig was the first scientist who successfully linked chemistry, physiology and medicine. His important contribution to the world of nutrition was Liebig's meat extract, which was a byproduct of the attempt to help an English friend's daughter overcome a serious illness. Her name was Emma Muspratt, 
Let's imagine her in the year of 1853 speaking of her recovery. I was ill in Munich at the time when I got very, very ill with the typhoid fever and I, I couldn't eat a thing. Well, nothing solid anyway. But my father's friend, Professor Liebig, well, he saved me. He invented a special meat extract which helped me regain my strength. <laughs> Thank you. Liebig was proud that his invention aided her recovery. Without this nutrition, she surely would have died. It was really very simple. The extract was made from grinding chicken meat, which was then placed into an aquarius solution of hydraulic acid. After 12 hours, I filtered the remains of meat from the liquid, which contained the protein, almost intact neutralized the acid and had Emma Musprat drink it. She recovered within a short period of time. The meat extract could not be turned into a commercial success because the production of the extract was highly elaborate. It was produced and sold by Munich's pharmacist von Pettenkoffer as a remedy for sick persons who were unable to eat. The history of Liebig's meat extract shows that meat is not the perfect brain food per se, but can be life-saving for a person in a grave, physically weak state. In 1865, together with Belgian engineer Gerberton, Liebig eventually developed a reliable method of manufacturing the beef extract inexpensively. He founded the Liebig Extract of Meat Company, whose trademark was his invention of the beef bouillon cube extract as an inexpensive alternative to real meat. A few years after the death of Liebig in 1899, this product was trademarked with the name OXO. So now you know more about nutrition, I hope you enjoy your next meal. Bye-bye for now!